The Holmes Chapel Viaduct Renewal was an ambitious railway infrastructure project focused on the extensive repair and strengthening of the historic Holmes Chapel Viaduct in Cheshire, UK. The viaduct, a significant engineering structure with 23 spans stretching over 500 length and standing at a height of 25 meters, was subjected to a major renewal to ensure its durability and structural integrity for future rail traffic. This intensive project, successfully carried out from the 13th to the 24th of February 2016, required precise planning and the mobilization of substantial resources, both in terms of manpower and machinery. A total of 563 individuals were inducted for the project, contributing to over 10,000 man-hours to bring the viaduct back to optimal working condition. The large workforce and significant machinery deployment were instrumental in ensuring the project was delivered within a tight 11-day time frame, minimizing disruptions to rail services. A key component of the project was the installation of 352 precast concrete PCC units, which collectively weighed 1,408 tons. These units formed the main structural reinforcement of the viaduct, bolstering its ability to support the heavy rail loads. Additionally, 330 cubic meters of in-situ concrete were poured to enhance stability and connect the precast elements. The waterproofing process covering 4,800 square meters was crucial to protecting the structure from moisture and preventing long-term deterioration. The renewal process also saw the use of two Colmar T10000FS machines. Known for their high load-bearing capacity and efficiency in rail infrastructure projects, these machines were essential for the swift and safe handling of the heavy precast units and other construction materials. These machines enabled the project team to manage and position the materials accurately across the viaduct's 23 spans. The project scale is further demonstrated by the logistics involved in removing and replacing the ballast and underlying materials. Approximately 8,000 tons of excavated spoil were removed and replaced with 4,500 tons of new ballast to provide a stable track bed, supporting the rails and sleepers above. The removal and replacement process required 10 engineering trains, which allowed for the seamless transport of materials to and from the site and ensured an uninterrupted flow of essential supplies and equipment. Despite the logistical and engineering complexities of the project, the Holmes Chapel Viaduct renewal was completed on schedule within the specified 11 days, meeting the strict demands of the railway industry for efficiency, safety, and durability. In September 2013, a unique and challenging recovery operation took place following the derailment of Locomotive 66734 on the West Highland Line WHL, in Scotland. This incident, which had occurred in June 2012, required extensive efforts not only to clear the line initially, but also to undertake a full recovery and site reinstatement over a year later. The WHL, renowned for its scenic yet rugged terrain, posed several logistical hurdles for the recovery team from QTS Quality Technical Services Limited, the firm assigned to manage the recovery and reinstallation of the area surrounding the derailed locomotive. When locomotive 66734 first derailed, it left a string of wagons blocking the line on a steep embankment, around four miles from the nearest point accessible by road. Given the urgency to reopen this crucial route for passenger and freight traffic, QTS and other support teams initially focused on removing the wagons and clearing the tracks. Remarkably, they managed to do this within just 12 days, ensuring the WHL could resume its operations with minimal disruption. However, the locomotive itself presented a different and much more significant challenge. Perched precariously on the steep incline and suffering substantial damage, it became evident that salvaging it intact was impractical. After thorough assessments by engineers and insurance inspectors, it was ultimately declared an insurance write-off. The insurance decision meant QTS's task shifted from rescuing a functioning locomotive to retrieving its remains. This undertaking, however, was anything but straightforward. The challenging terrain made conventional recovery methods nearly impossible. 
With no direct road access and the steepness of the embankment, QTS had to develop a strategy that would allow them to dismantle the locomotive on-site. Each piece then needed to be carefully lowered down the slope to a point where it could be transported by heavy lift equipment. Specialized machinery was brought in to aid with this work, as standard equipment would have been inadequate for both the rough terrain and the weight of the locomotive parts. This included cranes with extended reach, customized rigging systems, and excavators modified to operate on unstable ground. Safety was paramount during this recovery. The embankment's angle and the locomotive's position made conditions hazardous, particularly given Scotland's unpredictable weather, which often worsens in mountainous regions like the West Highland Line. The QTS team adhered to strict protocols, often working in shifts to avoid fatigue-related risks and deploying advanced safety gear and procedures to mitigate the danger of landslides or further derailment of locomotive parts as they were maneuvered off the track. The wagon recovery and line reinstatement operation at Loch Traig in 2012 stands as an exemplary case of emergency rail recovery and collaboration. Following a severe landslide on June 28, 2012, a locomotive and several wagons derailed, causing extensive disruption on the West Highland Line in the Scottish Highlands. This critical rail line provides essential connectivity in a remote and mountainous region, which made the landslide's impact severe, necessitating a rapid coordinated response to minimize disruptions. The recovery operation commenced on June 29, 2012, with the mobilization of emergency crews, heavy equipment, and specialized teams to the landslide-affected site. Given the unstable terrain and potential for further rockfalls, installing protective catch fences was the first order of business. These catch fences were strategically positioned to protect the workforce from potential hazards posed by loose debris, creating a safer environment for the intensive manual work required. The catch fences were a crucial component, as they mitigated risk and enabled recovery teams to operate with confidence despite the adverse conditions. Over the following days, approximately 500 tons of debris had to be cleared, most of it by hand due to the rugged terrain. This approach allowed the team to navigate areas that heavy machinery could not access, ensuring that all critical debris was removed. The manual clearance efforts were labor-intensive and dangerous, requiring skilled teams working in shifts around the clock to complete the work efficiently and safely. Clearing this vast quantity of debris by hand highlighted the extraordinary commitment and teamwork of the recovery crews who collectively clocked in 8,000 man-hours over a span of just 12 days. The operation was carried out in close collaboration with Network Rail's infrastructure projects and maintenance teams, which played a pivotal role in ensuring the line's speedy reinstatement. By coordinating logistics, equipment and personnel with the Network Rail teams, the recovery crew worked systematically to repair and restore the line's structural integrity. This collaboration was instrumental in enabling the swift return of rail services, as each team's expertise was fully leveraged to address the unique challenges of the Loch Traig site. RAIL was contracted by Hitachi Rail to the increase the capacity and capability of its existing old infrastructure at its Newton Adif facility. Over a two-week period, the team successfully installed this and several other structures, including two large six-track Virendil portals, and all the associated small part steel, cantilevers and 800 meters. These portals were selected due to their unique loading capabilities. This enabled longer span lengths of fixed tension overhead line equipment. In June 2021, Rail Electrification Limited RAL, QTS Group, a development that bolstered QTS's capabilities in rail electrification through REL's specialized expertise in overhead line equipment, OL. Soon after, RAL was contracted by Hitachi Rail to upgrade and expand the OL infrastructure at Hitachi's Newton Acliffe Depot. 
the primary goal was to enhance the depot's capacity for static testing and commissioning of an increased volume of new rolling stock, an essential component in scaling Hitachi's operations in the UK rail sector. While camerying out the works, REL installed a three-position manual isolator switch with a bespoke feeding arrangement that supported the use. Of a visual safety system indicating what was live or dead. This system had not previously been installed anywhere in the UK. Over a two-week period, REL's team installed multiple structures, including two six-track Virendil portals. Our on-site methodology was aligned to accommodate the operational requirements within our Deans facility. This led to a methodology which required both. The contract tasked REL with increasing the capacity and capability of the existing OL at the Newton Aycliffe facility. This meant installing new OL structures to support additional tracks and provide sufficient power and safety to accommodate high demand testing processes. A three position manual isolator and visual protection equipment. highlighted when the system was live or dead, along with all of the supplementary overhead line equipment. These portals, specifically chosen for their ability to support heavy loading, offered the advantage of longer span lengths and increased durability. A key feature of the installation was the incorporation of a three-position manual isolator switch with a custom feeding arrangement. This isolator switch allowed for a unique visual safety system to indicate when the OL was live or de-energized, providing a clear visual indicator to enhance the operational safety for the depot staff. This was the first time such a system was implemented in the UK reflecting REL's commitment to pioneering safety innovations within the rail electrification industry. On January 4, 2018, the significant bridge construction activity of beam launching took place near Jalan Technologi 3 6 in Kota de Mansara. This critical phase involved the installation of T-beams and U-beams, two prominent types of beams used in bridge construction. The activity aimed to advance the structural foundation of the bridge, supporting the superstructure that will ultimately bear loads and provide safe passage over the area below. Beam launching is a term used to describe the careful process of installing heavy structural beams over the spans of bridges. These beams form the foundation upon which the bridge deck and other elements will rest. The beams installed in Cota de Mansara, T-beams and U-beams, were chosen for their specific structural benefits and are commonly used in modern bridge engineering. T-beams and U-beams serve as essential components in bridge construction and differ in design, structural behavior and application. T-beams resemble the shape of the letter T and are advantageous for their high strength and ability to support heavy loads. These beams are especially effective for long spans as the T-shape allows for an optimal distribution of forces across the beam, minimizing bending and deflection. This characteristic is particularly beneficial in bridges where longer spans are required, reducing the need for additional supports. U-beams, on the other hand, have a distinctive U-shape and are often used in urban bridge projects where limited space is available. The U-shape provides enhanced structural stability and resistance to torsion, making U-beams ideal for handling varying load distributions. The selection of U-beams in bridge construction can also aid in reducing the height of the bridge deck, a valuable attribute in densely populated areas where the clearance below the bridge is a constraint. The beam installation process at Cota de Mansara was carefully executed by a team of engineers and construction professionals. Given the weight and size of the beams, precise planning and specialized equipment were essential for safe and successful installation. Large cranes were employed to lift and position the beams, while ground teams managed alignment and secured the beams into place. Each beam was carefully lifted, positioned over the designated bridge span, and set into place, where it was then secured to prevent any movement. 
The placement of these beams had to be precise to ensure that the weight and load would be evenly distributed across the bridge structure, enhancing overall stability and durability. The importance of beam launching in infrastructure development beam launching at Kota de Mansara marks a significant milestone in the development of the bridge, representing an essential stage in the construction process. Bridges are critical components of urban infrastructure, facilitating transportation, reducing traffic congestion, and connecting different regions within cities. Proper installation of T-beams and U-beams ensures that the bridge will have a strong and resilient structure capable of supporting everyday traffic and withstand environmental stresses over time. The Caversham Road Rail Bridge replacement at Reading was an impressive engineering feat aimed at modernizing rail infrastructure as part of the Crossrail project's westward extension to Reading. The replacement involved constructing a massive 1,000-ton steel and concrete bridge deck designed to improve capacity, reduce maintenance, and support the anticipated increase in rail traffic following Crossrail's expansion. The project was commissioned by BAM Nuttall in collaboration with Network Rail, focusing on minimizing disruption in the heavily trafficked area of Caversham Road. The innovative approach involved off-site construction of the bridge deck, a technique increasingly used in large-scale infrastructure projects to streamline installation, improve safety and reduce on-site work. The prefabricated bridge, which combined steel and concrete elements for durability and strength, was then transported to the site and carefully maneuvered into place using specialized heavy lifting equipment. This approach significantly reduced the time and disruption typically associated with bridge replacements. One of the unique aspects of this project was that it involved replacing not just one bridge but four older structures, some of which dated back to the Victorian era. The old bridges had been deteriorating over time, and their replacement was essential to support the high-frequency services that Crossrail would bring. By consolidating the four bridges into a single, larger structure, the project simplified maintenance needs and offered a streamlined modern solution to meet current and future rail demands. The new bridge, designed with a wider deck, allows for greater clearance and additional capacity. This capacity is essential as reading becomes a major interchange point on the crossrail route, facilitating smoother and more reliable journeys for passengers traveling to and from London. Additionally, the bridge's design incorporates features that enhance safety and accessibility for pedestrians and road users underneath, aligning with modern infrastructure standards. The replacement of the Caversham Road Rail Bridge exemplifies the growing trend of using modular construction methods in rail infrastructure, offering cost-effective solutions with minimized disruption. This project, part of Crossrail's ambitious £14.8 billion development, marked a significant step in the modernization of the UK's rail system. By 2019, with Crossrail's anticipated completion, the new Caversham Road Bridge helped make Reading a critical gateway into London's extensive rail network, improving overall efficiency, resilience and passenger experience for years to come.